Guest speaker, chairperson of the Commission of Human Rights in Philippines, Chito Gascon. Chairman of the Dudley St. Nyka oh, Foundation, Honorable Minister D.M. Swaminathan. Oh, Honorable Ministers, Representative of the Frederick Nauman Shiftung, Mrs. Sagarika Delgoda. Board members of the Dudley St. Nyka Foundation, members of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the Sena Nyka family, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. After a brief hiatus, I am delighted that the Dudley St. Nyka Foundation, together with Frederick Nauman Siftung, have once again organized a noteworthy Dudley St. Nyka Memorial Lecture. And what better way to start this year's lecture with an esteemed ch champion of human rights and liberal values, Chito Gascon, as our guest speaker. So on behalf of the Dudley St. Nyka Foundation, I wish to thank you for accepting our invitation and spending your valuable time to be here to enlighten us with your thought-provoking words. It is both an honor and a privilege to have you here with us this evening. Both Philippines and Sri Lanka have a similar history of colonization. We have experienced both autonomous and autocratic rule and suffered from internal conflict and terrorism. As you know, Sri Lanka has just emerged from a war that had plagued us for 26 years with countless lives lost. We have paid a heavy price for the peace we enjoy today. Apart from the tens and thousands of civilians of all ethnicities who fell victim to the bloody conflict, this country also has to face the scrutiny of the international community on human rights abuses and war crimes during the last phase of the war. War, particularly civil war, is never clean. In any conflict, the ultimate victims are the innocent men, women, and children. Even with advanced technology, where you can locate your enemies through satellite imagery and strike them with deadly accuracy by a drone that is controlled thousands and thousands of miles away, there is no avoiding civilian casualties, as we saw in Afghanistan and Pakistan. We do not possess this technology. Instead, thousands of young men from rural villages were recruited to the military forces, given a few weeks of military training, and sent to a hostile environment where they witnessed their brothers in arms being maimed and killed by IEDs, landmines, missiles, RPGs, and hail of bullets. Sent to fight a well-trained, ruthless terrorist group that pioneered suicide bombing. A terror group that recruited child soldiers and had no qualms of using civilians as human shields against an advancing army. A group that fought for a cause and would go to any length to achieve a separate homeland for their people, but at the same time without hesitation turned their guns on their own people who did not believe in their cause. While we condemn the LTT's ruthless actions, we must also strive to understand the reason that they drove them to take up arms. Then perhaps it may help us in finding a lasting solution to the ethnic issue. I must be clear, I do not in any way condone war or civilian casualties as a result of war. I am simply stating the reality of war. The casualties of war are always the innocent civilians caught in the crossfire. We as a country have endured much within the 26 years of conflict. We have witnessed and experienced the disharmony, death and destruction that conflict brings upon us. <coughs> we must strive to maintain the peace in this country and protect our future generations from ever experiencing what we endured in those 26 years. However, the peace that our valiant forces gained by sacrificing their lives and limbs, the peace that we all enjoy today, will only be temporary unless and until a proper reconciliation is achieved among all communities. We have to break down the wall of suspicions and build up trust among our communities. It is easier said than done as the wounds of war run deep, and time alone cannot heal such wounds. 
This government under the leadership of President Sirisena and Prime Minister Vikramasinghe is steadfast in bringing a lasting solution through a proper reconciliation process, a process that will unite and uphold civil liberties of every citizen of this country. Our Chairman, Honorable Swaminathan can attest to that. The path to reconciliation is an arduous one, a path we have to walk through with open hearts and open minds. This country cannot and must not be divided among ethnic lines. Instead, we must all unite under one flag with one common identity, a Sri Lankan identity. This is the vision of our first Prime Minister, the father of our nation, Right Honorable D.S. N. Naika. A vision that was carried forward by his son, Dudley S. N. Naika, when he assumed duties as Premier after his father's demise. Prime Minister Dudley S. N. Naika was not only a liberal, but also a proponent of good governance. Good governance is a platform the present ca government campaigned on and won the confidence of the people. However, good governance has proved difficult to instill on a governing system that has been corrupted for the last 15 to 20 years. It will take some time to undo all the wrongs done by the previous regime, but we are determined to fulfill the promises we made to the people a year ago. We have to be in the system to clean the system. I must say that we are still fighting the good fight mm. to instill good governance in our country. But the question remains, will the people have the patience to wait? Only time will tell. What have we achieved thus far? Well, for one, you all have the freedom to express your opinion and dissent without having to worry about a white van parked outside your mm -hmm. house ready to take you to your ma maker. The right to privacy, knowing you can freely talk on your phones without the government eavesdropping on your conversations. The freedom to practice your religion an independent judiciary, an independent election commission, an independent police commission, an independent media, the right to information, and you don't have to worry about ministers forcefully taking over your land or tying you to a tree. However, saying that, we do have a minister who hangs himself on a ceiling fan. <laughs> As we do have our hiccups, I must admit. I do apologize if I have taken too much of your valuable time to give the vote of thanks. I shall conclude by once again thanking Honorable Chito Gascon for gra gracing this occasion. I must also thank local representative of the Frederick now Shiftung, Mrs. Sagarika Delgoda, for graciously partnering with us once again to organize this event. Mrs. Delgoda, you faced severe hardships under the previous regime, but admire your courage and I'm glad to see you back in action with FNS. Thank you, Chairman Honorable DM Swaminathan for your guidance and leadership. We are indeed fortunate to have you as our new Chairman of the Board. A special thank you to Shalini Sena Naik, our Secretary. Without you, we would truly be in dire straits. A special thank you to Mrs. Ilika Karunaratna, who encourages us and drives us to make this event a success. Thank you, Mrs. Karuna Ratna, for keeping the memory of Honorable Dudley St. Nike alive by writing your wonderful articles. And a very special thank you to you, the audience, who attended this occasion. We hope to see you next year. Thank you.